please write this down I wrote here that the victory of the believer the victory of the believer depends on his understanding of the finished work of Christ the victory of the believer very powerful points to note as we begin tonight that the victory of the believer is not dependent on sentiments it's not dependent on some kind of superstitious wishes the victory of the believer in this kingdom here and now is absolutely dependent on his understanding of the finished work of Christ I'm not done but pause and let me explain that statement notice I never said the victory of the believer is dependent on the finished work of Christ no the victory of the believer is dependent on his understanding of the finished work of Christ as you will be learning the finished work of Christ as potent and as powerful as it is will continue to remain barren in the life of a believer until activated by superior spiritual understanding so the victory of the believer depends on his understanding of the finished work of Christ alongside the dynamics of appropriating the advantage it brings here and now alongside the dynamics of appropriating the advantage that that victory has brought here and now so we're discussing two things already that number one the victory of the believer depends on his understanding of the finished work of Christ but it also depends on his or her ability to understand the dynamics of appropriating the advantage in truth there is um, every kind of advantage you can imagine is captured in the finished work of Christ but it does not mean that we will come into the experience of it arbitrarily we must have an understanding of the finished work of Christ but we must also know the dynamics of appropriating that advantage to our lives here and now are we together generally speaking the Christian faith and, and I want you to really really listen I took time to study this um, hoping and trusting that God will use it to bless us tonight generally speaking the Christian faith now let's do a little Bible study um, the Christian faith is broadly divided into five areas or five aspects the entire span of the Christian faith is divided broadly into five areas number one please write for your knowledge number one the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan please write that generally speaking the Christian faith is divided into these five areas that means you are not a Christian truly until you know and you understand these five areas they could be further broken into many aspects but theologically speaking the entire span of the Christian faith is broken into these five areas number one the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan please write that down that is number one so the Bible begins by giving us a revelation of God God and then his eternal plan you find that in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God you find that in John 1 verse 1 in the beginning God was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so you see that the Bible begins by giving us an understanding about God when you read Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 11 still buttressing on that point 3 from verse 7 let's start from verse 7 the Bible says wherefore I was made a minister Paul is speaking now unto the church in Ephesus according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power we're reading to 11 he says unto me whom I am less than the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ verse 9 
and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. He's talking about God now. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So the first thing you have to understand is that the Bible begins with God. The Bible does not begin with an idea. The Bible does not begin with a principle. The Bible does not begin with a formula. The Bible begins with a person, God. And the Bible takes time to meticulously talk about the might and the all-surpassing power of this God alongside the fact that he has in his mind an eternal plan. Are we together? One more scripture, Isaiah 46 and verse 10. The Bible tells us how consistent the eternal plan of God is. It says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So the Bible begins with the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan. Can I continue? Number two, the Bible now talks of the creation and the fall of man. This is the second aspect of the Christian faith. You must understand the creation and the fall of man. Very clearly in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible tells us, Paul speaking by the Spirit, 3.23, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. All have sinned. It's a tragedy that has come upon all men by reason of our being in Adam. By one man's sin, everyone was affected. Are we together? The creation of man. It is important in theology we call it anthropology from the word anthropos i've taught you here understanding man the entire span of man not just from a scientific or archaeological standpoint but man as the zenith of god's creation are we together now the bible seems to focus everything on earth as far as god's creation is concerned the zenith of God's creativity and power was invested in the creation of man. Genesis 1.26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man, is the Greek word Eloha, the plural, the plural now. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Hallelujah. So you have to understand the story of the creation of man down to the fall of man you may want to make reference to our teaching let them have dominion we've done a sound exegesis of scripture as far as the creation of man and the fall of man is concerned so take note the first aspect of the christian faith is the revelation of god alongside his eternal plan number two the whole journey from the creation of man down to the fall of man number three very quickly is the revelation of jesus christ the third aspect of the christian faith is the revelation of jesus christ from genesis 3 after man fell every other thing that happened until the gospel was only midwifing the arrival of jesus it's important that you understand this you can literally summarize the bible and you are not you you may not be accurate like i taught you last week but then contextually speaking from genesis 3 the most important topic to discuss after genesis 3 was the incarnation and the arrival of the Christ. Everything from the minor prophets, the major prophets, the journey of the nation of Israel was only helping us to appreciate the processes that would finally lead to the arrival of Jesus Christ. So the third aspect of the believer's experience, the faith life, is the revelation of Jesus. This is not only the third, but in order of priority, this is the most important revelation as far as the Christian experience is concerned. Because everything that we celebrate today and that gives the believer the basis for victory is predicated upon this revelation. Are we together? 
John chapter 1, let's read 1 to 5 very quickly, then we'll jump to verse 9. We're doing a little Bible study. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Reading to 5, it says, the same was in the beginning with God. Now, John is introducing the Word very intelligently. You would notice theologically speaking, like I have taught you, that the, the synoptic gospels were approached from different standpoints. Others took it from a historic standpoint. Others took it from an archaeological standpoint. It was only John that began his discourse from the divinity of the Christ. Are we together now? So he says, all things were made by him and outside of him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4 says, in him, the him being the word, was life, and the life was the light of men. Then it says, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Please jump to verse 9. For sake of time, the Bible says, that was the true light. The same word again, that lighted every man that cometh to the world. 10. Let's continue, we're reading. It says, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 11, it says, he came to his own, and his own received him not. Uh -huh. We're reading down to 14. But as many as received him, meaning not everybody will be interested in receiving him, but as many as received him, the Bible says he gave them power to become, not just power against, it takes power to become a son of God. Even to them that believe on his name, 13, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Verse 14 now, it says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 and verse 29, same John, jump to verse 29. The Bible says the next day, I'm showing you the revelation of Jesus Christ as revealed from scripture. Now, let's hear what John has to say about this Jesus. The next day, John being a prophet, do not forget, he saw Jesus coming and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. John did not say, Behold a handsome 30 year old man coming by the river for baptism. He saw him by the Spirit and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now I did a little study and I took out time to write here the eight things, claims, revelations that Jesus said about himself. I'm still on point two. There are eight things I found out in the Gospels, especially the book of John. Eight statements that Jesus made about himself. It's important for us to know what Jesus said about himself. We trust what the prophet said about him. We trust what the Bible generally says through different authors about him. But I think the most trusted expression of who Jesus is was the statement he made about himself. So let's do a little Bible study. I hope we're still together. Number one, the first thing Jesus said, I hope I've not lost you. We are still discussing the revelation of Jesus. But now let's hear what Jesus said about himself. The first thing Jesus said about himself from the book of John is that he called himself, I am. John chapter 8, please, from verse 56 down to 58. Media, let's work together. We need to rush. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Jesus is speaking now. And said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. How come? Jesus is saying, This Abraham that you worship, who was the father of Judaism that you practice, he desired to see my day. Because I hope you know the gospel was preached unto Abraham. Abraham had an opportunity to hear the gospel, the Bible says, and Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness and it became the pattern for administering eternal life. That we will hear the gospel, we will believe like faithful Abraham and in believing, eternal life is credited unto us. Are we together now? So Jesus claimed that he was I am 
God himself. Well, let's finish verse 58. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Does that sound like a similar statement? In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 6, Moses encounters the God of the Bible in the burning bush and he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And then when you go to verse 14, same Exodus 3 and verse 14, verse 14, 3, 14, 1, 4. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. Now Jesus comes to say that I am. This is the person who is personified here. And they were angry. In John chapter 10, in fact, let's read from verse, uh, let's begin from verse 30. John 10. I and my father are one. Can't be clearer than that. Jesus made it straight to them and said, listen, if the father is God, I am also God. I and my father are one. Let's read to 33, verse 31. The Jews took up stones to stone him. Why? Jesus answered them and said, many good works I have shown you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him and said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, maketh thyself God. So the Bible is very clear that Jesus made a clear statement that he was and he is God. Are we learning? The second statement Jesus made about himself as far as his identity is concerned was he called himself the bread of life. Please write. Jesus called himself the bread of life. John chapter 6 from verse 35 and 36. Jesus called himself the bread of life. I am the bread of life, he says. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Next verse. He says, But I say unto you that ye also have seen me, and you do not believe. So Jesus said he was God. Jesus also claimed and said truthfully so that he was and is the bread of life. The third thing Jesus said about himself was that he called himself the light of the world. Please write it down. The revelation of Jesus. Jesus called himself the light of the world. John chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus called himself the light of the world. John 8, 12. Did I get that right? Yes. John 8, 12. He said, I am the light of the world. He that follows, followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That means the light of Jesus gives more than illumination. It gives life. There is a kind of light called the light of life. He called himself the light of the world number four am i right on that jesus called himself the door in john chapter 10 we'll read verse 9 then we'll back down to verse 7 john 10 he called himself the door i am the door not i'm holding the door i am the door he says by me if any man enter in why did he say by me? Because there were other routes that people were attempting to access life. And he said, I am the door. And I've taught you here that a door is an authorized system for access. Are we together? If I jump into your house from the fence, I am in your house, but I am a thief because I was not invited. Are we together? The fence is not an official way to enter into a house. I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, the Bible says he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Let's go to verse 7. Just two verses before then. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And you know, he calls us the sheep of his pasture. Are we learning? So Jesus said he was God, called himself the bread of life, called himself the light of the world. Now he calls himself the door. And that is so powerful. He didn't say, I am one of the doors. He said, I am the door, not even a door. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, 
Peter making defense of the gospel before the council he said neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it is important for us to understand that Jesus is not a more superior option the Bible declares and we trust the integrity of scripture that he is the only way the Bible describes to the father Jesus made that claim and we know that that is true the next thing Jesus said about himself was that he called himself the good shepherd he never called himself the good shepherd the bad shepherd the fact that he used the word good already tells you there are bad shepherds are we together the good shepherd John 10 verse 11 John 10 verse 11 the good shepherd I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. So don't say you are good until we see the sacrifice that you are making for the sake of those connected to you. What made him good was his willingness to offer his life. He called himself the good shepherd. Can I continue? Number six, Jesus called himself the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and and the life please write it down when you do not have a sufficient revelation of Jesus you will find out that your faith would not be properly grounded and anchored upon the integrity of his person Bible faith is anchored on the Word of God the integrity of all the claims of Jesus Jesus called himself the resurrection and the life John 11 25 I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Someone say the resurrection and the life. One more time. Say the resurrection and the life. He said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. These were the claims of Jesus. The implication of believing that he's the resurrection and the life is that you will sustain the power to bring dead things and dead people back to life. Number six, number seven. According to John 14 and verse six, Jesus told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Very powerful. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man cometh to the Father. In other words, you can never claim to have an encounter and a relationship with the Father, nor even receive anything from the Father outside of the person and the office of the Christ. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life to those who are confused he calls himself the way when you find someone confused the first question you ask him is where are you and the person says I don't even know where I am and he says try to describe where you are and then you now start navigating that person from where he or she is to the point they need to be okay what can you see there I can see a signboard I can see a statement oh I know where you are you mean you went that far all right so take a bolt or a cab or an uber from where you are and tell the man and you can even be so merciful to say give me the phone let me talk to the man I want to describe how to get to my point Jesus said I am the way that means every time you find yourself confused in life you need Jesus the way not just Jesus the person Jesus the way and then Jesus said I am the truth I told you that the truth is not just um, a statement that you don't agree with anything that does not stem from the integrity of the Christ is a lie anything no matter how popular no matter how societally acceptable it is if it is not consistent with the word of God it is a lie sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth and now Jesus said I am the life the final thing according to the synoptic account of John that Jesus said he was is found in John 15 and verse 5 he called himself the vine I am the vine 
I am the vine. Then he said, ye are the branches. We'll discuss that a little further. But eight facts that Jesus, very categorical statements that he made about himself. So in your seeking to explore and to know Jesus, it is important for you to find out what he said about himself. Most of us have studied what the prophets said about him. Most of us have studied what unbelievers said about him. Most of us have studied what demons have said about him, but we've not taken time to study the claims that Jesus made about himself. I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, truth and life, the vine. Jesus said he was all this. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. So back to our context now, we're discussing that the Christian faith has five areas a, a, a believer's a believer's Christian pursuit becomes balanced and holistic when you are taught and mentored along these five areas number one we said the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan number two the creation and the fall of man number three the revelation of Jesus that includes his incarnation it's important for you to understand that no earthly man, the Bible declares, played the fatherly role of Jesus in terms of conception. Joseph only played the role of stewardship because he was betrothed to Mary. Are we together now? Jesus is the incarnate one, the Bible declares. Incarnate means that he came from heaven. The womb of Mary was empowered with seed from on high with no earthly man whatsoever playing any role as far as conception was concerned. You need to understand his incarnation. You need to understand his earth work and ministry. Jesus did not just come to die alone. There were many things he did before he died. He went to the temple, for instance, when you read in Luke chapter 4, from verse 15 downwards, the scroll was given to him uh, where he saw the prophecy of Isaiah and he began to read and he quoted Isaiah chapter 61 that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and then when he was done he closed the book the Bible says and he declared to them that this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. So you must study the earth work and the ministry of Jesus because among the many things Jesus came to do was to be the pattern man to show us the the accurate portrait of a God pleaser. The father declared upon Jesus that he was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased. That means if you want to please the father, you have to outsource your approach from the study of Jesus, looking unto Jesus. You follow men and women of God as they follow Jesus. Are we together now? Then his substitutionary sacrifice, still on point three, the revelation of Jesus. I'm showing you the various facets of that revelation, understanding his incarnation, understanding his earth work and ministry, understanding his substitutionary sacrifice, a theological term that is used to capture the entire discourse of his death, his burial, his resurrection, this is what is called the substitutionary sacrifice. In fact, the, the theological term for it is called his vicarious sacrifice. The word vicarious means that whatever you are doing, you are doing for the sake of another, not for yourself. Are we together now? Yes. So that everything that happened, as we call it from the passion of the Christ, from the communion table to Gethsemane, to Pontius Pilate, to Golgotha, to the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and down the resurrection, everything that happened was not for the sake of Jesus. He did that in covenant with man and he did that for our sake. And then of course his ascension and exaltation. Do not just stop at his resurrection. His resurrection is powerful but there was more. 
after the resurrection Mary came remember she wanted to touch him she said Rabboni and he said do not touch me resurrection is not all there is I have not yet ascended he introduced the term ascension even when he was resurrected already so if you limit your understanding to the resurrection of Jesus you may not maximize the fullness of the finished work of Christ a lot happened when he ascended it was Paul who was granted access to see what happened in heaven that he entered into the most holy place in heaven in the similitude of the high priest and he offered his blood in that heavenly tabernacle once and for all and then a coronation service the psalmist also saw that the Lord said to my Lord sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool so the Bible tells us that a coronation service was held in honor of Jesus but not Jesus alone as you will be learning now Jesus in partnership with every believer are we together now and in that coronation a name was given to him are we Bible students the word name there means an office not just a means of identification a name Jesus is not the name that was given to him no he was already being called Jesus as we know it was his earthly name the name that was given to him is found in Psalm 24 verse 1 the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that that Jesus has now become Lord the word Lord means absolute owner master of things in heaven are we learning now of things in the earth and of things under the earth so you must understand the implication of his ascension and his exaltation the fourth aspect in building the believers faith and conviction is you must now know the believer in Christ please write it down the believer in Christ Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11 let me recap very quickly on the aspects I have listed number one that the Christian faith is divided into five areas number one the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan number two the creation of man all down to his fall number three the revelation of Jesus who came as the mediator and as Savior then number four the believer in Christ now watch this your study of man is different from your study of the believer because the believer in Christ is an entirely different thing are we together now just because you understand man as a species and as God's creation does not mean the believer is more than a man it's in your Bible it says have I not said Psalm 82 and verse 6 ye are God and all of you are children of the Most High then verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes the believer is more than a human being the believer is more than a homo sapien the believer is more than someone breathing oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide the bible has a lot to say about the believer Ephesians 2 from verse 11 be patient while I read 2 11 wherefore he says remember that ye been in time past gentiles in the flesh who were called on circumcision i like paul by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands it says that at that time you were without christ he's describing a kind of people without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without God in this world but now in Christ ye who were sometimes afar off have been made nigh by the blood of Christ 14 it says for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us 15 having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances 
for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace be patient as i read it says and that he might reconcile both the two people he has brought one as one the jews the gentiles now he's brought them one and to reconcile them to god and in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby 17 and he came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh 18 it says for through him we both have access by one spirit to the father uh-huh we're reading to 22 19 now now therefore he says ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints we are no more strangers and we are no more foreigners as far as the family of God is concerned that which alienated us the Bible says Jesus Christ whether a Jew or a Gentile in Christ we have become one family this is what Paul is explaining to the church in Ephesus it says and of the household of God 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone two more verses in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple in the Lord the final verse in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through his spirit so now he's describing for us this man that we call the believer the believer in Christ it's important for you to understand that in Christ you have a new identity and you need to understand the full import of that new identity and then you also will have to understand the dynamics of establishing and maintaining your victory in Christ these are all the implications of knowing the believer in Christ many people study about God they even study about man as a species but they never take the time to study the believer when Jesus Christ ascended when he resurrected the implication of his victory is that he produced a kind of person and the Bible calls that person the believer the believer is more than one who just believe in Jesus the believer is one who is the a bona fide recipient of the life of God you call it eternal life the Greek word there is the way great fathers and patriarchs like Kenneth E Hagin would call it the God kind of life now by the progressive advantage of revelation we know that it is not the God kind of life it is God's very life to call it the kind of life means that God has many kinds of life are we together the same spirit not another type Alos Paracletos, not heteros. The word Alos means of the same kind. That is what we're given. Hallelujah. It's important for you to understand this prophetic implication. What is the purpose of man? The Bible has a lot to say about this believer in Christ. Hebrews chapter 2, I believe, and verse 8. Hear what else the Bible has to say about this man. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, man. For in that thou put all things in subjection under his feet, he left nothing that was not put under him. That means according to God's desire for this believer in Christ, absolutely nothing should be left that should not be under his feet. But the Bible says, but now we do not yet see all things under his feet. So we need to understand the dynamics of appropriating that victory to be established in our lives here and now. Listen to me. If you are the believer in Christ, I'm coming there shortly. But this is just to give you a very sound orientation that your Christian faith will be founded on sand until you understand who the believer is understanding who the believer is is different from studying men you can study men from a psychological standpoint which is very advantageous you can study men from a scientific standpoint homo sapiens 
that is advantageous you can study men but we are talking about a very unique species of God's creation hallelujah the Bible simply calls us the believers number five what is the last and the final aspect of the believers Christian faith I wrote here the imminent return of Jesus Christ the imminent return imminent is spelled I M M I N E N T the imminent return of Jesus Christ and the ultimate punishment of Satan wicked spirits and those without Christ I'll take it again the imminent return of Jesus Christ and the ultimate punishment of Satan wicked spirits and all those without Christ the Bible is very clear and vocal as to the fact that there are activities that will happen when our sojourn on earth culminates in Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 please give it to us the Bible says and when he had spoken these things to the now 120 who would shortly be receiving the Holy Spirit the Bible says while they beheld watch this he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight verse 10 and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel let's read 11 together ready one to read which also said uh-huh ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven number one the same Jesus not another Jesus he will return in the same similitude you saw him levitating gravity could not hold him you will see him return in that similitude hallelujah Revelation chapter 20 from verse 10 John's account now in the Isle of Patmos while he was caught up in the spirit and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever verse 11 and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them verse 12 it says and i saw the dead is that in your bible small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works 13 the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and hell as spirits were delivered they delivered the dead that were in them and they were judged every man according to his works 14 and death itself and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death 15 it says and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire so these five aspects your christian life can never be rich and robust if you do not capture the revelation of god and his eternal plan number two the revelation of man understanding his fall and then the revelation of jesus the incarnate one who came as a mediator are we together and then the revelation of the believer in christ then the revelation of Christ's imminent return if you've learned something so far say amen. amen now let's discuss a bit about the believers who are celebrating Easter theologically believers are classified based on number one their identity in Christ I have taught you here and number two based on their function please write when you are describing the believer in Christ there are two parameters we use number one based on their identity in Christ and number two based on their function you will hear the Bible tell us several things describing who we are 
in Christ. And then the Bible now tells us our mandate and our function with respect to God's eternal plan. So when you are describing the believer biblically, you use the, these two indices, our identity in Christ and then our function. Never forget this. The Bible uses certain terminologies like we are one with Christ, the Bible uses certain terminologies like I am the vine and ye are the branches. All of these are attempts to describe our identity in Christ. Then when he speaks about the believer in terms of function, he uses words like you are the light, you are salt of the earth, you are kings, you are priests, you are ambassadors. Are we together now? The believer's identity holds the power. Listen carefully. The believer's identity holds the power to his or her walking in victory. The believer's identity holds the power to his or her walking in victory. If you do not know who you, have, you are in Christ, the implication of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, you will never be able to walk in dominion. You will never be able to walk in true kingdom power and authority. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. Please look at me. You see, the realm of the spirit was so designed that the light that emanates from the believer is a product of the revelation that you have and that is what translates to your authority and the power that you exert in the spirit when the sons of Skiva came and met the demoniac person they said we adjure you by god whom paul preaches by jesus and the demons responded and said jesus we know he said, Paul, we know, but who are you? In other words, we do not see you standing on the revelation. There is no revelation that sponsors what you are saying. And they beat those guys and the Bible says they ran out naked. Confession without an understanding of your identity will only make, help you make a mockery of your Christian experience. Unfortunately, listen, many believers continue to make bold confessions without taking time to really understand who you have become in Christ. The believer's identity. We teach our students in the school of ministry that when we are exploring the identity of the believer the first thing you have to consider and you may want to write is your positional advantage please write that down positional advantage oh hallelujah let this be a revelation to someone your positional advantage what does that mean your positional advantage reveals to you your status and your ranking in the spirit on account of this victorious sacrifice of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 7. This is the revelation that demons do not want the saints to have. This is the revelation that infirmity and all kinds of satanic things, when you do not have this revelation, believe me, no matter what else you know, you will be a victim of the vicissitudes of life. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us five even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with christ say together with christ please shout it say together with christ by grace are ye saved verse six now he says and had raised joshua selman up together it's not that jesus as he was ascending a mystery was happening that none of these princes knew he had raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. This is your spiritual location right now. In heavenly places. Heavenly places is not up. 
when you look up what you see is your ceiling heavenly places is a location of ranking in the spirit because you see there is order in the spirit even among the demonic kingdom they respect order it was paul that gave us the organogram he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what principalities against powers there were a legion of demons in one man but it was not all of them that spoke they also believe in obedience so it's important that you understand that positional advantage because you are able to exert dominion over principalities and powers on account of the consciousness of your status is someone learning we have been raised up keep that scripture there please we have been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ we have been raised up together what is in heavenly places you have to go to Ephesians chapter 1 chapter 1 from verse 19 let's see what is in these heavenly places the Bible says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power next verse which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead you see how intelligent Paul is the first information he gives the church in Ephesus is that Jesus was raised from the dead and made to sit in heavenly places when we get to chapter 2 he says in continuing that revelation you were raised together keep the scripture there please and set him at his right hand in heavenly places 21 he gives perspective to the implication of being in heavenly places that realm that is far above that organogram that paul would list far above principalities far above powers far above might far above dominion far above every other office that is named not only in this realm but that even in the world to come your status will still hold Listen, this is very powerful. There are many people trying to cast out demons and you find out by the next day your hand is not working again because you came with a blind approach, not from the standpoint of your positional advantage. Your feet may be stepping upon the shores of Abuja or any region, but the Bible says in ranking you have been exalted to the very position as Jesus was being coronated. The Bible says in him and with him we sat at that right hand of power. That means every believer in Christ who has this understanding can tell any demon any spirit in the name of jesus you have oppressed my family i i have been coming to you as a nigerian i've been coming to you as a yoruba man i've been coming to you as a house man but i come from my exalted position i come with the consciousness of my office the devil does not respect your earthly locality no the devil does not respect your age or your gender the protocol in the spirit is obedience is based on ranking and spiritual status your positional advantage is someone learning mm. so you may look ordinary for as long as you think you are ordinary but the moment you have this awareness listen this is not some Pentecostal jamboree no 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 this is, is it is truth the devil knows that this is true same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me tell you the truth when I stand to minister to, for, to people I don't stand with the consciousness of this pulpit this is too low for authority 
No. What is the distance between this and the ground? You stand from an exalted position. This is not pride. It is the truth. In the army, there are generals. Is that true? And even among generals, there are rankings. There are colonels, lieutenant colonels, and then like that. It, the Bible says, a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. A man of honor, a man who has been exalted and does not know. A man of honor who does not know. Waiting for the amount in your bank account to impart faith to make you know you are risen with Christ will cost you a lot. Waiting for the applause of men. You must carry this consciousness. It is not a privilege of preachers. It is not a privilege of the Western world. The same Lord is rich unto all. They say, I perceive, I see that God is no respecter of persons. Exalted. 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 His possibilities become my possibilities. Exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Far above great fathers of faith like Bishop Oyedeko will call it a far above mentality and they've proven it with their lives the Bible says he that cometh from above give us John 3 31 he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from the north is a northerner he that cometh from it's the south is a southerner he that cometh from America is an American but he that cometh from above is above all is above all is above all above causes above yokes above limitations he that cometh from above the preacher that comes from above the businessman that comes from above the parents that comes from above the career person that comes from above I am more than a Nigerian as much as I'm proud of being a Nigerian, it, it, it is more than being a Nigerian, more than being an, an African, more than being on the earth here. I may not look like it, but the Bible says I come from above. Prophesy to yourself, I come from above. I come from above. In the name of Jesus, shake off limitations, shake off the negative speakings of men. I come from above. Hallelujah. Man of God, the day you carry this consciousness, it should not plant pride, but there is a settled confidence. I come from above. That means everything will be exempted for me. It can't be normal when it comes to my turn. No, there is an advantage and I insist that at that advantage be reflected in my life. He that cometh from above. Do you believe the Bible? Now you see, sit down please, please sit. Satan, listen my dear people, Satan is the master of the sense realm. He knows that until the believer is properly mentored to a point where you become spiritually minded there is such a thing as being spiritually minded and there is such a thing as being carnally minded are we bible students the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace what does it mean to be carnally minded? That means your convictions are based on the impulses of the flesh, the impulses of the sense realm. If I check my account and I see a thousand naira there and I look and find myself in one small room and I'm trekking with no vehicle, I use those things to now describe myself and I feel stupid for believing what the word of God has said. So because Satan knows that except the believer is properly mentored to be spiritually minded, Minded, the default state is to use the things around you there are many wealthy people who are not seated in heavenly places there are many intelligent people who are not seated in heavenly places 
being seated in heavenly places is a status that comes as a gift by being in Christ the moment you have that understanding now you understand what I mean by the statement that we made earlier that the victory of the believer is not dependent or the dominion of the believer is not dependent on the victory of Christ alone it's dependent on your understanding there is a consciousness that swallows up limitation you can sit down in your one room and take Gary with honor still seated in heavenly places and you force that reality in that room to change and look like what the Word of God says do you believe what I'm saying I'm seated with Christ I'm seated with Christ I'm seated with Christ it has made me an overcomer I'm seated with Christ if you don't trust me trust the person I'm seated with hallelujah there are times that when they are giving offering in church children may not have offering but the people they are seated with can bail them out is that true they can be passing the offering bag and you are seated with no offering and someone seated close to you who you are seated close to matters spiritually speaking so you don't feel bad now but physically speaking because the person you are seated close to is seated with Christ the Bible kept telling us and showing us the picture of God and Jesus a number of times when Stephen was about to be matired out of the many things the Bible records that he saw was that scenario the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father in honor of a Messiah who was coming home ladies and gentlemen I submit to you there is no greatness for anybody in Christ who does not understand this you are not the first to come from a weak background you are not the first to start ministry with all kinds of limitations your status becomes your advantage in this wicked world he that cometh from above let me indoctrinate you again he that cometh from above cometh from above you will always reflect your location he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all the Bible says he that is of the earth do you know he's he's listing different realities alongside the consciousness that activates them that means you have an an option of having an above mentality an earthly mentality and we will know your conviction by your speaking the Bible says he speaketh of the earth he that cometh from heaven is above all what is all above everything above all you don't see limitations in your life your only limitation is the voice of God and the law of process what business does a plane have with a mountain what business does a plane have with water it is above the concept of mountain and river and valley is a relative statement is very relative a person who is flying 35,000 feet above sea level does not even know that he just passed a mountain so what you call a mountain is a representation of the realm you are looking at things from are we together what is the business of someone who is flying 35,000 above sea level with a snake that is moving on a mountain or a dog that is barking on the ground or an arm robber who is waiting on the ground no there are certain realities that will never reflect in your life until your mindset changes now let me tell you the balance most believers have not been taught this positional advantage properly it has translated to pride without revelation so there are people who cannot start small they say God forbid I will never take Gary in my life again I will never take this I can't stay in this one room I am no 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 this is not your physical realities does not if a king stays in a hut you call that hut a palace it's not it's not listen it is the it is the king's influence that changes the environment not the environment 
Are we together? There's a particular king in this nation. I think he's still alive. He was king at age two. Two years. Some of you may come from his region. Two years he became king. And you see the small boy with all kinds of rappers that look like they just wanted to snap him. Whether you believe him or not, he is king. And from that time till now, he's been king. Your positional advantage. Your positional advantage. I always marvel at an aircraft as it lifts. You will see it turning very slowly, lazily. Sometimes you are looking at your time and you are almost getting angry. And it looks like the plane spoiled. Just be patient. Let it get to the end of the runway. And it starts moving to a point that you cannot even tell what speed is at. And in literally, without exaggeration, in less than a minute, is already far above you, you you just keep looking at things and houses now become like toys the Bible now says we have been raised up it's a spiritual location so when a spirit talks verify what realm before you waste your time with heart attack and pain and whatever it is if someone looks at you and says you will never amount to anything before you waste your energy verify from what standpoint I truly believe this about myself and I'm proposing this understanding that this is what sponsors your victorious living you will waste the experience of Easter if you just celebrate Jesus alone you must know that as he was raised I was raised with him I was raised with him I was not raised with him as an apostle I was raised with him as a believer I am first a believer before a man of God when you strip me of everything I have the last thing that will be left is my status as a believer and the Bible tells that it is the greatest status behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God not men of God sons of God is a greater status than a man of God a man of God is a description that shows the geography of your assignment a man of God does not describe your identity with God but being a son of God the child of a CEO and a board member in that company in terms of status and access who is greater hmm. do you believe what I'm teaching you ah. mortal man awesome God mortal man awesome that I'm just a mortal man awesome God unassisted outside of Christ we are mortal men the word mortal means death doomed subject to deterioration at any point that's what it means to be mortal but when you are joined to Christ let's continue so in discussing the identity of the believer, the first thing we are looking at is your positional advantage, your exalted position, elevated in ranking. I wish we had time, we would have looked at the adumbration of this in Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, when you read from verse 40, what happened to the man you called Joseph in Egypt was a foreshadow of what was going to happen to the believer. Are we together now? So Joseph interprets the dream of Pharaoh and in an instant he is exalted. Thou shalt be over my house, Pharaoh said, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. 41. It says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land. 42. It says, and Pharaoh took off the ring of his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to ride on the second chariot which we he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt seated with Christ in that exalted position number two 
The second dimension of our oneness with Christ that helps to establish the victory that we now have in Christ or the second dimension of our identity in Christ I meant to say is our oneness with Christ so we're looking at two things as far as the identity of the believer is concerned number one our positional advantage and then number two our oneness with Christ let's discuss oneness Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 30 to 32 isn't it very interesting that when it had to do with oneness the only example the apostle could get to explain the extent of our oneness with Christ is marriage it says for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones watch this 31 for this cause this understanding for this cause the intention to use marriage to exemplify you see that the mystery between Christ and his church shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be called what it didn't say they shall be called strangers who have been joined with a ring it took more than a ring to bring them together a ring was just a token are we together 32 it says this is a great mystery that means marriage among the many things it seeks to provide is the most graphic representation of the extent of the oneness of the believer with Christ are we together the same way when a man gets married to his wife she changes her name and begins to bear his son name am I right on that you now call her Mrs. his name Give me that scripture please the bible now said it is a great mystery he says paul is saying but this is not marriage seminar i'm speaking about christ and the church christ acting as the husband and the church now as the wife i have taught you this that theologically speaking is called the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one different people but now bound by that covenant in ancient times they had what they called a salt covenant a salt covenant was a way of describing the depth of unity that could exist between two people so if two people were to step into a covenant and they meant business everyone would come with a measure of their salt watch this now and they would pour it in a container this will pour this will pour and then they would shake it and mix it together the condition for that covenant to break is for everybody to pick the salt they brought are we together now inseparable and the church is married to a responsible husband for starters he came to die for you even while you were yet a sinner Number two, he's exalted and he carried you along. Are you seeing responsibility? Number three, while he's seated, he's still interceding. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. Let's look at a few scriptures. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Watch this. Our oneness with Christ is sponsored by the presence of the Spirit of the Living God. Watch this. The Spirit of the Living God is the principal factor that provides the basis for our oneness with God. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you jesus is speaking now he's telling them about an experience that would happen shortly for he dwelleth with you now he shall be in you john 17 and verse 20 jesus is speaking concerning our oneness neither pray i for these alone but for them which also shall believe on me through thy word aha uh -huh, 21 it says that they may be one as thou father 
art in me and I in thee. Are we together? That they may also be in us. Look at the description of the oneness. I am in you, you are in me. Now for the believer in Christ that he is now part of us as far as that oneness is concerned. That the world may know that thou hast sent me. 22. He says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one as we are one. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Let's read together. Very simple expression. Ready? One to read. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One more time. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Do you know what that means? That everything that makes Jesus, Jesus, both in his earth work and his glorified state, he has freely shared it with you through his spirit. The implication of your being one with Christ, listen carefully, is that number one, you are a recipient of his life. When he says, I am the vine and you are the branches, it is the same nutrient that flows from the vine to the branches and then expresses itself as the fruit. You know what the branch is? The fruit bearing part of the vine. You want to know how healthy the vine is? Look at the branches and then the fruits that come from them. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 8, 11. Please write. Romans 8, 11. The Bible says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, it says, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Look up, please. It is my prayer and I will tell you, I still continue to press into this as a person. It is my prayer that we come into the full comprehension of this mystery. I believe that before Jesus Christ comes, there will be a practical manifestation of dominion over sickness and diseases. It looks like this dimension of dominion I submit to you, for some reason, it looks like the church has declined in walking in this dominion for various reasons. There are scientific reasons, there are climatic reasons, atmospheric reasons, all kinds of things, the kind of food that we eat. But I can tell you, the Bible says that the, the implication of our oneness with Christ is that something can happen to your body that stops it from deterioration and that you walk in health and vitality eating well is wonderful but that is not the reason why the bible tells you you are you should you are free of sickness i believe in eating well i believe in uh, all the medical things but I've, I've cautioned us don't be careless we have doctors here if you are not feeling well go to the back go and meet them they will treat you and you are still a christian are we together we are not going to be foolish in addressing spiritual things and allow people to die the doctors are not antichrist while your faith is growing to stand and you know at to, in a position now where you can be free of sickness doctors hospitals and medicine are expressions of god's mercy so please don't feel bad don't go and swallow drugs in secret and come and tell lies and say i don't take drugs that's not the issue Thank God for your understanding, but let's be truthful and be matured and take away any kind of childishness out of the body of Christ. Treat yourself with honor. Go to the hospital with honor. Take responsibility over your body. But at the back of everything you do, please do not ignore the Spirit of God. The Bible says if that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that same Spirit, that same Spirit, not another, that raised Christ from the dead dwells. That means if it is true that God did not lie, if it is true that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he says that same spirit shall quicken. The word quicken there means administer vitality, health to your mortal body by the same spirit. I submit to you 
that the body of Christ is yet to come into the fullness of this revelation. There are people here and there who have caught it, but if we are to be very honest, there's nothing embarrassing about it. It is a dimension we can press to with faith and understanding. God does not lie. This Bible you see cannot be broken. Let God be true and every man including our experiences be liars. Whilst we trust God for the ministry of doctors, we must get to a point where we carry this consciousness. I am one with Christ. Someone say, I'm one with Christ. Because we live in very evil days. You will see a teenager, headache, headache, and the next thing they will tell you they found a tumor there. Are we together? And you are wondering, how old is this child who was a healthy child? I hope you know that some of these demonic things are devilish. Are we together? I heard about someone who got up in the morning, I mean played around and went to bed. Got up in the morning and was completely blind. No symptom, no progression, completely. I've heard of people who within a span of one to two months, they just had an acceleration of cancer cells until it got to stage four. Just like that. I believe in this healing wave. I believe in the vitality of the saints. We don't contend for divine health because of fear of death. Death has already been conquered based on our positional advantage. The Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. It didn't say to be traveling somewhere, to be present with the Lord. So whether in this life or beyond this life, we are victorious. And let me encourage you, if you've lost any loved one to sickness, bodily deterioration, accidents, activities of terrorists, etc., please find hope based on the integrity of scripture. Find hope and comforts that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Nonetheless, we are given the assignment to keep progressing in our knowledge until we attain a point where we can dare sickness. We can look at these evil spirits that were sent from hell. I wish I had the time. I would have shown you the spirits that were released to the earth in the book of Revelation. They were released to the earth and they were given certain assignments. Kill a third of the people. It was a mandate. And then there was the rider upon a pale horse having the pair of balances. And the Bible says his name is death. And his assignment is to kill men. No devil will take my life before my time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many people are afraid now because it looks like scripture cannot be trusted again. When it has to do with this issue of divine health and longevity, these are the scariest areas for believers right now because it looks like there is a growing dominion of sicknesses and diseases over believers. Are we together? To a point where it seems unusual right now for an average person to be free of any sickness. It looks unusual. But I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that before Christ returns, there will be a manifestation of this revelation. There are saints of God without pretense and lying who will walk in the reality of this resurrection power. If you believe that, shout amen. What's that beautiful song you sang? By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat I don't know the other part, sing it for me.
came to Papa Kenneth, Co Kenneth Copeland and you can imagine that man in his 80s and he's one of the people that have represented an inspiration to the body of Christ. Sickness and health is one area you cannot fake for too long. If you are lying eventually, age mixed with wickedness and demon spirits will catch up with you. The Bible talks about Joshua and Caleb. These were men who were strong and even in their 80s, their natural strength was not abated. Is it not in your Bible? Hmm. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. I have read from church history books a few men who walked upon this earth and demonstrated that this thing called divine health the dominion of the saints over spirits that afflict is a reality please do not I'm going to pray for people before we end up who are having all kinds of plagues of sickness but you don't know how angry I am in my spirit not just because of my call by the privilege of what I do, I have been to many hospitals praying for people. I have seen how sickness can literally trap the life of, of not just the victim but the entire family. That every they keep building projects at a halt, they keep education as a halt. Everything must wait to honor that spirit. The resurrected king. Is resurrecting me that's what is happening do, do, listen listen do you know how wicked sickness is it does not care whether you are Muslim Christian whether you are a baby I've prayed for babies that I can how wicked can Satan be Just when you build your house and you want to rejoice with your children, you get up in the morning and one part of your leg cannot walk. I was shown one of our dear ladies, she probably may be here. Something happened to the father and he said he just felt pain on his leg. And the next thing, when I saw the picture, it was like twice the size of a normal leg and everything was already rotting. Don't tell me it just happened. There is something these spirits know that the church is yet to know. And the secret is not just in bold face. Somebody must be given the mandate to reintroduce this thing to the body of Christ with authenticity. And I'm praying that God will be able to trust us. That in our generation we'll be able to say we have found something. We have among the keys that we have been given. That we can administer the same way you can minister the baptism the same way you can teach a person from being poor to be prosperous the same way you can mentor a person john g lake the bible says at the time of john lake in spokane that they had healing rooms it's in your history books they would keep people there for 30 days under a strong influence of the healing anointing and afterwards you will find them walk great men like Kenneth E. Hagen Charles and Francis Hunter E. W. Kenyon name them ah. by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name I come alive you declare your do you know how much of a blessing you will be if you can heal just one sickness just one category effortlessly you know how many people on earth they will look for you they will pay to see you they will cry to do whatever that is how degraded man has become 
we need a restoration we are tired of talk and claims of unverified stories authentic manifestations of the healing power of Jesus not just from one person or one man of God two or three men of God are too small to handle this urgency we need a widespread manifestation of the healing power of Jesus all across this nation across Africa one with Christ if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead the dead body of Jesus was lying on the tomb and the Spirit of God came and entered that tomb and resurrected that body now the Bible says that same spirit lives in you listen listen just help those under the anointing listen carefully hear me the bit that we have gotten is what is the the little revelation that we have scratched is what is producing what people call an outstanding ministry right now and yet compared to what we still have to learn and know and manifest we are still toddlers as far as understanding when it comes to the healing ministry I submit to you on earth today there are great men but there are few people that can beat their chest and say generals of healing let's not lie to ourselves you know what it means to be a general you have mastered the dynamics of reproducing a result under any condition there are generals of prosperity there are generals of teaching but my goodness the world is waiting 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 and let me tell you church of the Lord Jesus Christ if we do not validate this oneness by the results that we produce a day will come familiar spirits will partner with men and women and you will begin to see similitudes of many healings that are antichrist and no matter what you say about it it will not make any difference because if your child is dying and you're a responsible parent you will look for anything within your power to keep that child alive while on one hand we are shouting and telling people don't go to Habalis, have you been able to be a worthy alternative? A man who healed someone's son, someone's daughter, healed the whole family through divination of HIV. Now you are saying you should not go to that man. Jesus heals. Prove it. And at the end of it, we finish the service and share the grace. And then we boast and say three people were healed. Out of how many? And have those three been verified? Uh, listen, I'm not being, we thank God for what God is doing so far. But let me tell you the truth. When I return back, in spite of the mighty things that God does here, I know what an avalanche of the power of God can do. There are a few things we have laid hold on by the grace of God. We must press to reveal the reality of this oneness. John G. Lake, when the plague hit the city where he was, people were dying. And if you contacted that plague, just like a coronavirus was, it would kill you there, the foam from the mouth. History records. And he was helping the people to bring out the dead bodies and those who were affected. And the medical people warned him. They said, be careful. You are putting your life at risk. And they were right. And he said, no. Then it, an experiment was performed, we were told, where they put the foam from the mouth of one who was dead. And they found out, I was told, that the whole, the whole thing just died like that. They couldn't find anything alive. It couldn't affect him. Hmm. Can I tell you? There are arrows that fly by day that are being released to the earth that we have not seen. There are spirits that I'm, I'm not making you afraid except you don't believe the Bible. There are sicknesses that will not have names. Medical science is coming to a point of honest admission right now that there are things that their machines cannot diagnose. Are we together now? mysterious occurrences satanic manifestations just like that 
a child wakes up in the morning and that's the end of it cannot see cannot walk cannot talk they go to the hospital and they find out that that child has some feet problem some heart problem just like that someone just collapses on the ground and they find out Abba. church of the Lord Jesus Christ preaching is powerful but you see what we preach as resurrection today was not a sermon it was an activity that happened are we together the times I have seen the manifest power of God to lift to heal I have been blessed watching those people who were healed you don't know what it means for a family when they experience the authentic power of God to heal verified verified that someone who was diagnosed stage 4 cancer the person goes to the hospital and you run all the tests and they say you are cancer free completely what 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 do you know how many sermons will come out of that testimony the world is tired of the lots of noise that we keep making we need to understand that our oneness with Christ if true has an implication that we must demonstrate here and now is someone learning by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King is resurrecting me some of you as you are listening to me right now there are sick people in your family some of you as you came here now you are here with all kinds of death sentences celebrating Easter without experiencing the power is a mockery of God to the world did you hear what I said celebrating Easter without the power made manifest is a mockery of God to the world the power component the ability to validate that resurrection write this down write this down write this down write this down my spirit is fired up now write this down please play the strings for me watch this I wrote something down here by reason by reason of our positional advantage and our oneness with Christ we now have access to the following please write by reason of our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ through his spirit we have access to the blessings of his blood right please we have access to the blessings of his blood his life his word his name his presence and his power let me take it again by reason of our exalted position our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ we have access to the blessings of his blood the blessings of his life the blessings of his word the blessings of his name the blessings of his presence the blessings of his power so when you say you are a believer you are one who in Christ has been exposed to these forces of victory that you have access to the blessings that come with his blood his life I repeat his word his name his presence and his power write this down our mandate please start this statement it is one of the major statements 
that I came tonight to tell you, if you can summarize everything I have taught you, it is captured in this statement you are about to write. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. Write that down. You will still continue the statement, but write it down. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection as a ritual, a moment in time, March or April. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection. And that is the topic of this discussion tonight. Validators of his resurrection. How? By revealing the kingdom, the power, and the glory of this Jesus. This Jesus we claim died. This Jesus we claim rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the power, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus. Listen to me. Easter is not a ceremony. No, there is no power in the observance of the dates. The real way to celebrate Easter is to become validators of that resurrection. When you are a validator of that resurrection, you are celebrating Easter every day. Not just one day. Yes, of course, it may be profitable to commemorate those times just to keep us in the knowledge that Christ did this. And if that is our understanding, that is fine. But if it's just a blind Christian ritual, then it will soon turn to idolatry because in itself it will not have any power. The real power of Easter is that we obtain grace at this time to be validators of his resurrection by ensuring that from us and through us there will be a revelation of the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus revealed through the saints to be a blessing to the world is the true essence of Easter Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 I like us to read it together one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all it took more than celebration to give witness the Bible says with great power let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light this is the prophetic word for someone let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy Hear me. God did not send us here to just be celebrators of an event. We have been given a mantle and a mandate from heaven that as far as you are alive, that this territory will not forget God by the abundance of the witness that your life provides. The Bible calls us validators. There is a claim that God brought Jesus to prove. And we are alive today, here and now, to be validators of those claims. When Jesus came in Luke chapter 4, he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah. And he flipped to where it was written, Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me preach the gospel to the poor he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to them that are bruised 
the Bible says when he was done the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him and they looked at him and he said this scripture is fulfilled in your ears and he looked through the congregation the healing ministry according to Luke's synoptic account was one of the first validations he saw a man with a withered hand and he said stretch your hand and that man stretched his hand no assumption know whether you were healed or not healed Jesus for you he went to Cana of Galilee according to John chapter 2 the first miracle recorded according to John's synoptic account the Bible says wine had finished but watch Jesus he was right there in that occasion and he said don't worry there is something we can do the presence of the kingdom is here and let me show you the power and the glory that comes with this kingdom fill six vessels and fetch the water take it to the rulers we claim that we have the same spirit we pray in tongues and shout in tongues but the benefit the proof of that oneness is not there there's nothing wrong with our prayer and all of that is only that do you know why the world keeps looking at the Christian faith as a nuisance to civilization because respectfully speaking we are full of activities energetic activities that demand our time money and investment but there is an evidence that the world is waiting for Allah Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God has not called us to be a continuation of this limitation. The body of Christ has tried, but we must step up the bar. Easter is a reminder. Easter is a wake-up call. He said, awake thou that sleepest. It is not just a time to eat chicken and turkey. That's wonderful. But beyond that, you must go back and ask yourself, am I a true validator or am I just a, a, a person discussing Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God verse 20 says for creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope 21 says because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints hear me everyone who is listening to me here in Zaria all the overflows outside our global family there is a mandate and a mantle upon your life to be a validator Easter is not just a time to say wow we finished Easter now the next one is Christmas we keep recycling these rituals and they become burdensome rituals with no power they can even become hedonistic activities that end up most people reject Jesus during these festive periods because their lives are full of practices that are even anti-resurrection most times around these periods all people do is just to dance to eat and to drink and it's even those who don't know Jesus that celebrated most we look to Yahweh Yahweh I hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh we look to Yahweh Ephesians 2 10 then we'll go to 3 10 Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 then we'll do 3 and verse 10 
the Bible says, for we are his workmanship. Say amen. amen. Created in Christ Jesus. The same way a, black, a blacksmith would sit down and begin to fashion a farming tool because of the kind of work it will do. Are we together now? There was a time I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across this video where a very heavy steel materials are created that crush metals cars and all of those things and you, you would watch them squeeze a car squeeze anything at all just squeeze it like a piece of paper as it passes through and I said that's it so the Bible says we are his workmanship you were fashioned the nature of your build tells you your assignment the nature of your build God took time to pour himself into you the Bible says created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained so our good works is consistent with his predeterminate counsel for ordained that we should walk in them give us chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent what intent Paul said unto me I'm the least of all the saints but this grace was given to me to teach men the unsearchable riches of Christ to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the ecclesia the manifold wisdom of God there is a dimension of God's grace and power and kingdom and glory and wisdom that the world is waiting for listen to me it takes more than being an inventor to take the world I can tell you one area where the world is desperately crying for is dominion over time dominion over wicked spirits that afflict men this is trouble that both the rich the poor the educated the uneducated Africa and the West the world has not been able to come up with a permanent solution of dominion over wicked spirits it is the one thing that puts all of us in the same position naturally speaking the wealthy man is looking for solution for his health, his longevity and his life. The weak man is looking for the same thing. In Africa we are crying, in Europe we are crying, in America we are crying. Because when it has to do with this one, the answer is not on earth. The answer only resides with he that is seated on the throne. Jesus walked upon the earth and demonstrated invincibility. These spirits cried, they begged him begged him don't cast us from here and with one word he said go and that was it we sing all kinds of songs that implicate us what manner of man is Jesus we clap and we dance he made the blind to see and while we're saying it almost every case we're calling has the people represented there and we finish preaching and we say let's share the grace we organize all kinds of things, miracle services, healing services. And I, I'm not downplaying it. We're doing our best with what we know. But I'm telling you, we need to raise the bar with all honesty and reintroduce the power of Jesus to the world again. They have a right to reject our Jesus until we can prove he's alive. Not say he's alive. Not sing he's alive. Not argue that he's alive. An evidence is the end of all arguments the assignment of an evidence is that it comes as a token of truthfulness when you go to the court of law it is not your noise the judge is waiting for they may listen to you patiently or impatiently but when they get tired they ask you do you have your evidence that is why arguing in the secular you must come with statistics facts and figures when you come and say this one is happening they say prove it have you done a thorough research have you come up with statistics so when we travel across the nations and with their people and say Jesus is Lord, they have a right to sit down and say, what do you mean he is Lord? Jesus is Lord. I need that Lord over the condition of my child. Watch Jesus. He meets a woman at Nain and says, I, it's, a, it's an expensive statement to say I am Lord. Bring that coffin down. And he lifts that dead body. He goes to meet Jarius' daughter and he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood by the time he's done with her Jairus's daughter is dead and he says no problem with me there's nothing like too late get out of the room talita kumi little girl i say unto you arise 
Naaman was a man who was leprous. It was not a parable. And the prophet casually, without hoping it will work, go and wash seven times. And you will know there is a prophet in Israel. Today we call ourselves prophets and apostles and thank God we are trying. But ah, in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, we need to draw this bar and stretch it wide enough. In, in, in the days of the Bible, if you were called a prophet, it was almost like you were God. When a donkey got missing, after three days, they said, let's not be fools looking around. There is a man we know, not there is a place. They stopped the issue of location. They said there is a personality that embodies the possibilities of God. This mysterious entity called Samuel, that his word does not fall to the ground. Whatever it is between him and God, we do not know. But we know that this is a human being and a half. Let's go and meet him. And they were on their way. Watch this. And true to their word, as soon as they saw Samuel, the donkey started going home. What kind of a wicked donkey is that that will allow his owners to suffer and then as soon as you meet a prophet the donkey was on his way going back home. Mm. May God take us to these realms. Can you imagine that the New Testament was founded upon better promises and yet we are yet to touch and scratch that dimension. There is something these men knew about God that we need to pray that God will impart to our lives and our generation. Otherwise, we will continue to mock the integrity and the potency of God's word. There are all kinds of movements editing the Bible, downplaying saying God did not mean this. Because when you don't have proof for many years, you have to create a theology to, to downplay what happened. Are we together? The apostle was teaching and somebody died and he said, sorry. He went out, raised the person, brought the person back and the lecture continued. Kai. Ali shalaka borosi katariata. Mandeleke parusiata. Oh, let revival come again. Let it come again. Let it come. Whatever made us become this dead, whatever made us celebrating spiritual mediocrity from place to place, there is, there is, there is a high calling, a high standard. Are we together? Samuel looks at Saul and says, let us go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his army? And he said, three things will happen to you because you met me. Number one, the donkey that has been missing on your way back, you will find out it has been discovered. Number two, you will meet three men holding two loaf of bread that will salute you and give you, which you should receive. Number three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines, he says, and that when you come there, the hand of the Lord will come upon you. The Spirit of God will be upon you and you will prophesy. Look at the man Elijah resting upon the mountain and they bring an army in bands of 50. Look at how this guy suffered in military school and stood before a prophet and he downplayed their training with one shout from heaven fire came down and roasted all of them they brought another band again the third band begged they said we are military people but we're not stupid brothers and sisters nothing this powerful listen nothing this powerful should easily go out of fashion christianity is fading away because the the wow factor the attracting factor in the faith work is dwindling and fading and what is left are just religious rituals and the celebrating of men as superstars and God is tired of that there needs to be a definite restoration of power the power of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit I'm not even talking of your ability to heal everything. 
Let's even say you just obtain the grace to heal cancer alone. That you can come up and say any other thing I've not caught the revelation. But if it is cancer, forward march. Let me tell you, you will weary yourself like Moses from morning till night. Because you will see a cue that unifies both rich and poor. Male and female. People will travel from every place and they will come. That they have learned that God is with you. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength, but only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Hear me, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice, and it is part of your prophetic destiny to carry this healing anointing i stand right now and i stretch my hands wherever you are may that mantle begin to locate you now may that mantle begin to locate you now the mantle that grants you the grace to validate the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus obtain that grace now Hear me, hear me. I can tell you the truth. Mantles do not leave the earth. Every mantle you see in the Bible and every mantle you see in modern history is still hovering around the earth, waiting for aligned vessels. And God is crying in these days. This is the sound of the spirit that Easter should not just be a time of blind celebration, but for, for, for God's sake, that someone's life can begin to cry Maranatha come healing grace come healing grace come Lord Jesus come Lord Jesus dominion over wicked spirits that cut short the life of people and plague their bodies thank God for the little we are doing but for God's sake let's contend for higher levels he showed me a river. He measured a thousand cubits. It was to my feet. A thousand cubits. It was to my knees. A thousand cubits. It was to my loins. And a thousand cubits, an overflowing river. A thousand cubits. There are kings. There are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a Shua will reign forever, to his kingdom there'll be no with my life that Lord whatever it will take to hold superior dimensions of your power for my generation I will pay that price in Christ I will obtain grace to press because I will never join a queue that keeps misrepresenting the power and the potential of the kingdom ladies and gentlemen we must graduate from falling down and shouting in church to producing valid results that demonstrate the resurrection of christ the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace great grace great grace that was what was responsible great grace great grace that 
people will run to your house while you are sleeping they are patient we are not here to wake you we know God is with you we will wait until you wake up because we know that one declaration from you can rewrite the realities of our life this is not human worship the Bible calls God being embodied in a man a mystery of godliness it's a great is a mystery of godliness that God became a man seen of men and angels he said as my father has sent me so send I you the gospel was never supposed to be this difficult to communicate the difficulty is the alternative we try to bring to explain away the absence of authentic results hear me what do you tell a woman who comes to church with her child because you told them that Jesus heals how do you explain a woman who comes to church say by 7 a.m. in the morning for a service that will start at 3 or 4 and she sits down with the expectation that Jesus will meet her child do you know what will happen to that woman as she drags that child back home and they say you went to church in the morning some even take a step of faith to take the child out from the hospital and say after all you're on your way dying but I hear Christians say Jesus resurrected let us bring him there this is not about the issue of being called into the healing ministry or not except you hate Jesus you should contend for the healing anointing in this end time more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life let that be the prayer of a generation lifespan in Africa last I checked is 48 years that means the moment you get to 48 years in Africa most likely it's countdown for you where is that here and yet respectfully speaking we are all here men and women of God believers all kinds of books the Bible we have we keep printing it in different versions for better understanding I'm not being sarcastic let me tell you anybody who loves God must throw away that arrival mentality and we must begin to cry in all honesty because thank God for the little we have done and I say little without a sense of exaggeration relative to what we need to bring as we usher in the return of Christ let God be true there are virgin dimensions of power we are yet to get to and we must learn how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and cry until mantles are falling here tonight Once again. anointings are falling here tonight Once again. graces are falling here tonight Once again. graces are falling here tonight taught me in the area of healing through their materials Charles and Francis Hunter and I remember they wrote a book a little book it was captured in a statement that one manifestation of healing 
is worth a thousand sermons. I agree. I agree. I agree that one person rising from a wheelchair is greater than many series put together. No wonder the Bible calls men living epistles that a man's life can be a sermon and it can preach more articulately than any other person regardless your level of oratory. I taught you here commanding salvation over territories. Listen to the message. I told you that results are evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. There are certain sermons that only results can preach. Results are preachers. Results are preachers. Healing miracles are preachers. Supernatural manifestations of prosperity can preach the gospel. Breakthrough, favor, these manifestations of the kingdom, they are preachers. My assignment and your assignment is to be worthy conduits that the power of God can flow through us to the nations like a river. A few, a few weeks from now, when UK bringing the gospel with the power of God among the many tens of thousands of people that are coming are people who are sick, people who are oppressed, hoping that these people coming will not be noisemakers again, recycling our expectations and not making them granted. Do you know what Jesus did to the fig tree? that had leaves to attract him and not produce fruit, he did not advise it, he caused it. My prayer for myself all the time is that I do not become a man of God who attracts people, proposing many things that I cannot defend. Listen, every revelation God gives you before you start preaching it, stay with God to access the grace dimension of that revelation. The things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things our hands have handled of the word of life, it says that is what we preach. I am not ashamed of the gospel the apostle said for it is the power. Beyond a message, it is the power. I don't want to just talk about a healing Jesus. I want to demonstrate a healing Jesus. I don't just want to talk about a prospering Jesus. I, I don't just want to talk about a delivering Jesus. Patriarchs of faith who have joined the cloud of witnesses now, like Reinhard Bonke, they would come and say, Africa shall be saved. And with the simplicity of their voices and their body language, they moved across nation to nation and they, nothing could resist them. They demonstrated, they gave witness to the resurrection. I once listened to a message by T.L. Osborne and almost half of the message I was in tears. I was not in tears in self-condemnation. I just cried and I said, God, what is this? What happened to us? At what point did we miss it? Was it poor mentorship? Was it inadequate consecration? What, at what point? Let me tell you this. Transformation will always be faster when there are models that now exemplify what people should enter into. For as long as we still tell people, be this, there has to be men who personify these possibilities and we thank God for people in the body of Christ who at least have been able to show a roadmap. But I submit to you with every sense of responsibility, bragging at our current result will be a mockery of the integrity of God because I submit to you there is still a long journey. For as long as there are cancer people dying, the doctors now depend on us for support and we are disappointing them. We mock and insult doctors and say, doctors, you are useless. We believe in the power of God. The doctors have said, okay, we agree we are limited. Come and help us. They give us access to hospitals to pray for the sick. Even against the ethics of their practice because we propose to them that we have superior power and yet we've not been able to demonstrate it. And with gallancy, they tell us, get out. Keep arguing your case while we do our best as instruments of mercy. It is my prayer that my generation 
will be able to stand and lift among the many graces we are not called to do everything but this healing banner not to brag and say i had a meeting five people were healed what does that mean glory be to god but relative to what when a student scores five over hundred did he pass dear lecturer please answer me did he pass no five percent is wonderful you didn't get zero but you still failed they will categorize you together with the person who did not even write the exam has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me no I has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ be formed in me I'm forced to recall the vision that I had many years ago and in that vision I was in an environment it was a night time just like it is when it's night or when there's a curfew and I saw all kinds of sick people terrible diseases and they were lying there you know how especially in parts of the north you just have people who have all kinds of sicknesses and they were there and I came I was heartbroken and I began to sob, to weep, to look at these people because I felt very helpless. I had the heart and the compassion to help them. But the grace was not there. And then I heard a voice and that voice spoke to me and it says, heal them. You see, like many of you have slept and seen yourselves in crusade grounds. Many of you have slept and seen yourselves healing. But don't let it die as a dream. It is destiny calling on you. It is a mantle revolving around you and saying, when will you respond? You think God has the time to waste those kinds of dreams? Why do you think it keeps coming? Man of God, don't be celebrating mundane things whereas there are superior demands in the spirit. You go to bed and there you see someone on a wheelchair watching you. And then you try to pray for the person. I will never forget many years ago. I went to pray for someone in Zaria then. And I sincerely, they gathered as a family. The person had a problem with the back and was, you know, grounded on a wheelchair. And they came believing. They had heard of the little that God was doing. And they truly believed. Suspended everything because I was coming to their house. So you could not say they did not have faith. What then is faith? They believed. And I preached a very sound message. You could make a series out of that message. Powerful message like many of us keep doing. And then when I was done, when it was now time to give witness to the resurrection, I was there and I believed, well, I don't know now, but I believed that I had faith except that I stood before that crippled person and I said in the name of Jesus with every ounce of faith in me and absolutely nothing happened not many people will be honest to tell you this as men of God we like sounding as if everybody mm -mm. Mm -mm. I felt so bad that day how could I preach so much imagine the miracle Imagine such a powerful sermon, sound exegesis of healing. Now, the moment had come to give witness. Does it look like what is still happening today in many of our circles? When it has to do with teaching what God can do, we have done well. He can heal. When it has to do with singing it, my goodness. When it has to do with acting drama of healing, you know, 
youth groups and teenage groups in churches act drama so beautifully. You would see how Jesus resurrected and how Satan is falling up and down. Except that unfortunately that is acting for many people. When the sick become healed, when the oppressed become delivered, when we make Isaiah 61 come alive again, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a wave of civilization that the church will reintroduce. I hope you know it is results that define civilizations. I give you an instance. It was the discovery of the internet that literally brought another kind of civilization. Now electric cars are coming. Is that true? Yes. Now virtual reality and all kinds of things, the metaverse con uh, concept, internet of things, all of these advancement in technology, they are literally, civilization does not just happen, it's a man's courage backed up by his intention. An individual can get up, like one person got up, introduced the internet, and now most of our children and teenagers do not even know what a typewriter looks like. You see little children, and all they know is to flip. They don't know how to punch. They don't know what keypads look like. That is how believers can reintroduce a civilization. That a day will come when many people will run and say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Does that look like a scripture you have read? That it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain. Listen, it's more than prosperity talk. This is beyond money. We are talking of intangible things that money cannot buy. Like the power of God. He said, though money perish with you, for you think you can buy the gift of God. Do you know how many people can carry their life's earning? Literally their life's earning. They diagnose someone and say, we need 20, 30 million. And that man has saved all his money, representing all his labor. And in one year, it disappears. And it's not like there is a guarantee for healing. And while that is happening, sadly and respectfully, we men of God, I come back to us again. We're here jumping and bragging on stage, whereas there are people dying. And you see, the real referee is not us. The real referee are the unbelievers. The unbelievers are the umpire. They compare what we are saying versus what is producing from our lives. And they say, no, this does not add up. But the good news is that this will be one Easter that will be with a difference. Because for you, your assignment tonight is not only to celebrate the ceremony of Easter, but to know that there is a mantle that is looking for you. There is a mandate crying for your destiny to become a validator. God is depending on your witness. The world has it, have a right to say we lied. Do you know that when Jesus resurrected, remember one of the synoptic accounts, when they discovered that he was alive, the Bible says they paid people and they said, please, make sure you say he's not alive. Satan is still paying people today, paying systems and structures to say Jesus is not alive. But our assignment is not just to sing up from the grave. Our assignment is not just to celebrate the ceremony. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift. In the next two minutes, I want us to pray. Wherever you are, let this be your Easter gift to your destiny. I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say the grace component that makes to be a validator of your resurrection, I obtain. Someone open your mouth and pray. 
Shalanda Braska Veratos Kapari Katosha Vrendes Kemash Embra Katapa Katabaratos Kapadekatos Yata The grace, the grace to give evidence to the resurrection. The grace. Someone pray, someone pray. Father, I am available. Let it fall like it was in the day of Pentecost upon my life, upon my singing ministry, upon the word ministry you have given me, upon my business. Let me become a validator of your resurrection, not just a celebrator of your resurrection. Pray one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone. Let me say this one time and then I'll just speak over those who are trusting God. We have to do this at least to honor the resurrection of Jesus. Let me repeat the last statement that I made that our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the kingdom the power the glory of this jesus apostle peter on the day of pentecost while he was preaching the first sermon after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he said, this same Jesus that you have been crucified, that you crucified, has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive of this spirit. He says, for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off even as the Lord shall call. Let me take a minute out of our limited time already to just speak over those who are trusting God for a miracle. In one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing or your hand on your chest if you are standing for someone or trusting God for any kind of miracle. Let me just speak over your life to honor this day. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, every devil of darkness that has plagued anyone watching by television watching by the internet from our zaria family our global family all the overflows down to this auditorium in the name of jesus christ and by the power that raised christ from the dead i command that spirit to give way now i decree and declare every sickness heart conditions be healed now yeah. cancer be healed now yeah. HIV be healed now yeah. kidney conditions lung conditions be healed now yeah. blood related conditions be healed now yeah. eye conditions be healed now yeah. Ear conditions be healed now. Everyone here who has been bound by any spirit, I lose you now. I lose your family now. I lose every member of your family now. Anyone here and those watching who has been appointed unto death, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare the fullness of your days you fulfill. Yeah. 
and anyone here who is particularly in ministry serving the purposes of the kingdom from tonight I forbid you from being barren as you communicate the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ with great power you will bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ genotypes every negative genotype be changed right now in Jesus name barrenness be healed now hepatitis be healed now pile be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now bone related conditions be healed now those who are watching from any hospital or any point where you have a patient let the power of God on this resurrection day move through the airwaves and touch that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you for all of you who are here from today I stand in the name of Jesus and I empower your hands I release you as proof producers I release you as miracle workers I release you as signs and wonders in ministry in business in career receive it in the name of Jesus Christ listen from today you will no longer wait until you come for koinonia become an extension of these possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ listen let me challenge you when you go back home go and meet those who are sick and take a step of faith and lay your hands on them don't say I cannot do it lay your hands if your loved ones tell you just remember I have been raised up with Christ just remember the Spirit of God lives in me that the resurrected King has resurrected everything in me I am you are an ambassador a validator a witness carry this mentality today hallelujah and as you do that in the name of Jesus may the Lord use you to rewrite the history of the lives of men The last thing I'll do when we're done, you need Jesus. Your relationship with Jesus is the most important component. I told you here, there are people whilst you heard me teach, whilst you heard me preach, the Lord began to speak to you, letting you know that you need Jesus. Let me your attention for a minute. Hear me. It is a terrible thing to reject Jesus, especially with the knowledge to give someone an opportunity before we wrap up tonight wherever you are very boldly without any sense of fear or shame I want you to leave your seat and come and stand here very quickly I'm going to count one to five Jesus is calling you run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand I begin my counting one two the rest on the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me. Come, your name come to Jesus. To declare your victory. The resurrected is Look at my little daughter. Come and join them. Jesus loves little children, adults, all kinds of people. Come. If you are coming, please come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Jesus is giving you a new beginning. What an Easter gift. What an honor. What, what a gift to the King of Kings. Come. He's ready to give you a new beginning. Apostle, I do not know if I'm saved or not. You can have such a reality as the assurance of salvation. Come to Jesus. And those who are connecting, 
across the globe here is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord even if you are following as a way of rebroadcast Jesus is still giving you an opportunity right here right now come the resurrected King is resurrecting say this after me all of you who have come I salute your courage listen everyone who comes to Jesus the Bible declares that he will in no wise cast you away thank you for your courage and for making this decision lift your right hand if you can high above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me say Lord Jesus I declare that I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight on this Easter night I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your glorious hands lifted father thank you for these precious people by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus I call you from hence bona fide recipients of the life of God I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit may you be grounded and established in righteousness and I declare that you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus mighty name we pray